Hi everybody, it's time for me to show you my finished room. It's not entirely finished. There are pieces that need to be done. Um, I need a desk for my computer and a new desktop for the other one, but I mean, it's workable now and it's just a matter of preference of wanting something different. But I've been using my art room for, I don't know, maybe a month, two months? Maybe it's been a bit that long. And it's working for me. I don't know if some things will change down the road. I haven't used it, I don't think, long enough to know what's like everything that's working and what's not, but I'm really enjoying it. There is, there's light, and one of the first things I did was buy plants. So there's quite a few plants in here. But um, I'm gonna stop talking for an intro and I'm going to show you my room. Okay, so I am standing at the top of the stairs with the huge sliding doors, which I will turn around and show you at some point. So this, and of course the sign goes behind a cloud. <laughs> okay, I turned on all the lights, so if the sun goes behind the cloud again, we're still covered. So standing at the top of the stairs, off to the left, I have this shelf that my husband made for me quite some time ago. And now my dog wants out. Okay, so to the left is this shelf. And I have some books, art books, and journals that I work in, and my record player, and some records. I only got a record player last year, so I don't have a huge collection. And there's some journals and some magazines and some more handmade journals and some art books. And down bottom we have some of my Dilution journals and my Art by Marlene journal and some notebooks. There's a painting I haven't finished and a travel tote for little notebooks and watercoloring. That's a piece of wood that I love, but I don't know what I want to do with it yet. And I have one of my paintings on the wall. And this light fixture. Okay. So I bought, I bought this shade and then the light as a kit for, for like, make it yourself. So, between my husband and I, well, I designed the, this part, which I pretty much got from Shanty to Chic. And I don't know if mine's a bit more simple than what they did, I can't remember. But then, so I just did a basic drawing of what I wanted and then my husband figured it out and made it. So I have one of those on each side of the big window and this is the chair I moved it because I was showing you the light but I wanted a comfy chair to sit in this is not the one that I want this is just there for the time being until I get a more comfy chair can't get everything all at once 
This basket just has a lot of my paper packs, like watercolor paper pads and the Bristol and the mixed media, like all the big sheets of paper that I use to make mini albums. And here we have, this is a, a track system, like a, to cover cords and cables. Because as you can see, I have this huge light up here and there's a cord just dangling along. So this track is going to cover up that ugly cord. So you're still going to see this, but at least it's white and the ceiling's white and it'll look better. So in here, I still have my camera stuff that hasn't changed and this hasn't changed. It's ink for the printer and some photo paper and printer paper and then my printer on this pull out tray oh i didn't dust my printer been a little busy <laughs> okay now to the right when you come into my room we have this setup so these are the cubes that you can get at michael's all of these here they are all purchased from Michaels and then this row this is hubby he made that for me so there's another one of the lights this one we just left plain except we added this little wooden detail up top and that one's just a hanging light fixture that's all I wanted for the hanging ones. I didn't want it, I don't know, I just didn't want anything fancy. I think that's pretty all on its own. So I have some paintings and my clay figures and some plants, some finished albums, a little bit of knickknacks and finished pro projects. My old fashioned fan. Another plant, this one is not doing as well. It's doing a bit better now. It's a heart fern. And when the leaves are curly like this, this is not a good sign. So, I don't know. It's not doing horrible. Like this is better than what it was looking earlier. I've moved him around a few times trying to find its forever home where he likes to live, but having a hard time okay so that's this area now for what's inside I didn't change a whole lot because I'm gonna use it for a while and see how it goes if you know just live with it for a while so this is still just letter stickers that I rarely use Scrap pieces of paper, again, that I rarely use. <laughs> These are little alphabet sets. I like having them all in one tray. Then I can just pull the tray over and pick letters. And then I have alcohol inks. And I show you what I store those in. That's an extra heat gun. So this is a container that I got at the dollar store and it fits them quite well. These are lying down because I think those are taller. No, they could stand up too. They probably just fell over. Yeah, these all fit and when it's fuller, like if this container was full, they wouldn't be falling over. And I know Tim makes containers for alcohol inks, but this is working for me. And it fits nicely in there. And I think that's another reason why I don't want to get the Tim ones because those fit in that slot. And I'm trying to remember something I told you that was wrong the last time. Oh yeah, I told you that this unit came with these two trays and then hubby made this one for me. Well, this part is true. Mark did make this for me, but these two actually came 
in a different unit. So these didn't come with it at all. I will show you what, what part those came in when I get to that section of the room. So I didn't want you going to Michael's and looking for a set that came with these two drawers because that's not how it came. So in this corner, it's a little bit of a mess, but I don't know where to put it. So it's living here for now. I have some epoxy and some wooden panels that I'm gonna do something with. And this container is just office supplies, like paper clips, elastic bands, stuff like that. I have my laminator and the two different kinds of punches. This tray, some just some old paper. And in this drawer, I didn't change, it's still bling. I did throw some out, so I don't have as much as I did. Still more than I'll probably use. This drawer is chipboard. And again, I threw some out. This is a bit of a knickknack drawer. There's some wooden items in there. These are just some empty tins. So I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how to store my art foamies. It was not easy at all. I wanted them, I didn't want them too out of reach and tucked away because then I wouldn't use them. And But they didn't fit in a lot of things. And I wanted to use my drawer unit for something else and that's where I had them before. So I ended up just using these containers, having a Ziploc bag with a sheet of paper with the stamped foamies on it. And I'm storing the foamies on both sides. And that way the paper helps it stand up and I can just flip through and it, it makes it easy. So that is what I'm using for my art foamies. I don't know if that will change or not. Okay, so on this side is a calligraphy kit that I have yet to use. I bought that at Costco. This is my crocodile, and this is that huge thing of foam tape. And yes, I do use it. <laughs> and I don't even know where to go to get another one if I run out because I can't remember the place where I got it. I know it was somewhere in London, but that's it. So this one is kind of a mixture of items as well. I have some things for stamp carving, some, oh, bind it all. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> the coils for bind it all and for, you know, like the happy planners and the other thing that I can't remember the name of. I am losing my words. And then some Tim Holtz items, and that is a fountain pen set. This one, and that's where this one's supposed to go. This is just like things I can make albums from, or just use the items for other things. And this one is clay. But I don't get to play with very often. I would like to, but I don't. And this one, there's punches. This used to be in a big drawer and I changed it. I moved it over here because I don't use them that often, so I didn't need them that close to my workspace. More punches. This comes out more, I just don't want to pull it out and have it fall I'm doing this with one hand, so don't want to break a toe. This one just has some felt and some foam. And then in this tray, oh, this used to be closer to my desk and I had acrylic blocks and I think I had some pens and stuff. These are some 
big stamp sets. And some mini albums I made. That was in my first room tour, so that hasn't changed. Now, I already told you what was in that one. This one is a bunch of chipboard, some bigger items and some plain chipboard sheets. This is a tray of stuff that I didn't know what to do with, so I put it there for now. This is my Tim Holtz stamping platform, and I have a cutting pad, my scoreboard, and some other boards, paper trimmer, envelope punch, and another paper trimmer. And, oh, I forgot about these down here. Another mini album hasn't changed. Some other stamp sets, which I think I want to move closer to my work area because I may forget that I have them. So those will probably move to another drawer with some other stamps, which I will get to. And this I put under here because I have my big shot. So these are like the cutting pads and texture plate things that you need and some long dies. And here are some little punches and some um, Sizzik dies. And now my dog is barking to get back in. <laughs> just do a little shot, I don't know if you can see it, just so you can um, see the tracking system for the sliding door. Those were purchased on Amazon. And remember how my cat would get in? I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this with the lighting. But my husband made, and I'll show you on the other side, this. So I push it upwards. I can slide the door open. And then this is from the track. So then we just push this down, and it hooks over a little bit. And then you can't, Mosby cannot slide the door open. Can you see him in there? <laughs> he wants in. And so, okay. <laughs> so this used to be the only door that was a problem that he could get into. But now he has managed to find a way into these big doors. He discovered it last night. And so, <laughs> as you can see, that's a clamp. I put a clamp there so he cannot open the doors until we find a way to do this door. Yeah, my cats are a pain. Good thing I love them. Okay, going back to this. I already did that one. So these containers, a bunch of paper clips, feathers, a bunch of knickknack stuff. I was so glad I found it. These are just from the dollar store. And it's awesome because this plus one of these fit right under here. So it's awesome. So this is one of those huge staplers that can, I'll pull it out, that can fit you know, in the middle of big. You could do a sheet that's 24 inches long and be able to get into the middle of that one. And this is just a little more pins and embellishments. And it has my bind it all and my distress setter. Let's see. <clears throat> this thing. This is an old tool. It uh, distresses the edges of paper. Oh yes, <clears throat> I thought I had finished, but I didn't. Okay, so in these drawers, I haven't changed them. It's still my embossing folders and my thin die cuts. The, the dies, not the die cuts, but the actual dies. This one's the Tim Holtz ones. And then some other super duper old ones that I could probably get rid of. And it says two alphabet sets in here. And more.
hurt him. These are thickers. And the drawer came like this with these little dividers in here. So it's great for stickers. And this one has other stickers. Okay, so I think that's it for that unit. Okay, now remember I said this drawer thing I wanted to use for fabric? Well, that's exactly what I did. And on top here, I just have a vase and it just has a few, I know, it's not very pretty, but it is what it is. This is my album that I love. And then I just have some sari ribbon. So there's some thread and bobbins. Just some knickknack stuff you use for sewing and stuff. Fabric. Not pretty. This I love. Like, isn't that gorgeous? Is that gray stuff I love? Which, if you saw my Instagram stories, I found more. The dollar store finally had some again, and I was super happy about that. This is. Some is purchased burlap, but some of it, like this and this, this is from when I tore apart my Dina Wakely journal and made this journal out of the pages. Well, I didn't use this stuff, but I kept it. This I actually have plans to make to cover the cushion on a bench in the foyer and make a pillow to go with it, and I still haven't done it. <laughs> some old it's actually my daughter's pants but I love the fabric so much and the colors that I kept it to use to make stuff and that was a sweater that I love the fabric there's more and I bought it in black I'm losing my voice <laughs> and that's just some batting and some books that came with my new sewing machine and the pedal if I want to use the pedal and you know that other stuff that comes with it. So that's it for the left side. Okay hey, now here is the desk that's in front of my window. Back up some. So you see how I have a light on each side. I had some plants and I made some plant holders and I'm not going to show you how I made those because I followed I've never done macrame before so I just went on YouTube and found some patterns that I liked and follow their I followed their tutorial now a couple of them it may have started with their tutorial but then it wasn't everything I wanted so I changed it up and came up with a pattern of my own but I don't actually sit here very often because I mostly stand, but I did want a sitting option. And sometimes I'll just sit here because it's in front of the window and I mean, that sun coming in, like if I'm gonna be writing or planning out something, then I'll sit here because it's just so nice. So this is still the desk that was downstairs. And I think you can recall in my last video, I show how he cut off a piece of the top to use as a temporary top for this one. Um, so this is one of the things that he has to do is make a top for this desk, but I'm in no rush for that. I, I mean, this is fine, it works. I do eventually want it replaced, but I'm in no hurry for it. So on this desk, Excuse the mess, but I joined Weight Watchers. I know this is totally off topic, but you're seeing it. So I joined Weight Watchers two weeks ago, and <laughs> Tuesday Pass was my first weigh-in after joining, and I was shaking. I was so shocked. I got my first 
five pound last pin turn and I got my first 10 pound because I lost a total of 12.2 pounds in my first week that is insane so that's actually some planner stuff and some recipe books so I like to plan my suppers for the week ahead that way I know what groceries to buy and I do better if I plan my meals because if not and I'm wondering what to have then I could eat anything but anyways that's a total different video <laughs> so I will shut up so I have this spinny thing with some tools in it and my desk lamp and Mosby got in my room last night and chewed my plant. I am so upset. And you can hear him now wanting to come in. No. No. I'm not happy with you right now. Why do they have to make cats so cute? It's hard to be mad at them. But I am mad. <laughs> so there's just some arty things in my pen holder. My sweet parents and some more plants so this one I did a stick I did the plant holders the macrame and that one and there's this one I really like that and these are actually bowls bowls that I got at the dollar store that I absolutely love the pattern on them so but they didn't have any drainage so my husband drilled a hole and I'll insert a clip of how my husband did that for me and then I just bought some plates again at the dollar store to put underneath so the water had somewhere to go besides on my desk if it got too much water. And here's another plant holder that I made. This one gets little tiny orange flowers. Isn't that pretty? Just so excited to have plants. <laughs> okay, so we keep going down, and there's the other light fixture. And I put a couple of the shelves. These were the shelves that um, had my wooden stamps on down in the basement. So I separated them. Down in the basement, there was just a big row of them. But up here, I put two over my desk, and the other ones are over there holding some paintings. So this is what I'm using for my desk right now, and yes, that's a huge monitor. I got a new monitor because my last one was too small. This one may be a tiny bit too big, but I don't have to maximize the windows. <laughs> and if I'm standing and making stuff, then it's great for watching Netflix because I'm away from the monitor and it's just like a small TV. So anyways, this unit, this was actually my daughter's makeup table or desk combo because she used it for both. And I'm, gonna, I'm using it for my computer desk until my husband has time to make me a desk, which may be a while because he has a lot of orders. A lot of people want him to make him stuff, make them stuff. So on the desk, I just have the speakers and some pens and a picture of my cuties when they were babies. Well, not babies, but you know, compared to how old they are now, <laughs> they look like babies. Now, both of these carts, actually no. This one was purchased at Michael's and this one I got at Ikea. And I'm wishing I needed another one, <laughs> but I don't. 
but my husband has them at his store for only $40. 40. Probably paid almost 100 for this one. And at Michael's, they're ridiculously priced. But I don't need one, so I'm not buying one. So this is just like tags and little ephemera and some old hottie swap stuff. Just a cards from Project Life that I'm hoping I'll use in some way in like art journals or something. So I'm giving it some time to see if I'll actually use it now that it's out where I can see it. And if a bunch of time goes by and I still haven't used it, then it might be time to say goodbye to it. So here, my desk isn't big enough to store some of the things. Like I wish this could fit in the drawer. That's the mic I use to do voiceovers. And my son borrowed it and he broke the stand. So my husband had to glue it. He had to glue that because he broke it right off. So it either sits really low like that, which I mean, my head's a lot higher than that. So I tend to use it by sticking it in here. But anyway, when my husband builds me a new desk, I'm gonna ask that this drawer is a little bit deeper so this can fit inside. And this is one that I bought that I haven't used yet. You can put your phone in it. And I haven't taken the sticky off yet, but you take that off and it could click down. And you can use it in your vehicle, like on the dashboard. Or you can put it on the desk and use it. So, and this can turn this way or you can turn it the other way. And this one I have the Tim Holtz words, the people, some little Tim Holtz knickknack things. And back there I have some wooden veneers. And some odds and ends, some die cuts. So just a mix match of all different kinds of stuff. And this one, it'll be like some stickers and labels and doilies, and just some notepads, just that kind of stuff. So in this one, I used to keep my paint in one of the drawers in my island, in the second, one from the bottom, but I am liking this much better. It's easy to grab, and I don't have to be opening and closing the drawer. And this, of course, it's on wheels, so I can just slide it over to my island, or if I was at my desk, like I can just move it to wherever I wanna be. And later, if I'm like working on a painting, and I have my easel set up, I can roll it over so I plan to do that kind of painting. I'm probably gonna be standing over there in that open space. So I mean, it can roll over there. So on the top I have, it's mostly Liquitex and I have a few Amsterdam. But everything else is Liquitex except for one, two, I think four Amsterdams. Oh, and I have a few cheap artist soft ones. Oh, okay, maybe I should shut up because there's a lot more than Liquitex. I have some of these neon colors from the dollar store. That one that I don't like. That one's from Michael's. That one's from the dollar store. And these are some, oh, these are Liquitex. Okay. And that's just a paint palette tray. And here's some cups. These are ones that you can fill with paint. I have paint markers. Um, this one is mostly my golden paints. And I put these down here because these are easier to pull out and see the colors with it being on the second level. These were there's so many in there in tubes, I just thought it would be easier to have those on top. So I have my fluid acrylics and my tubes of golden open. And these are my golden high flows. And then in here 
I have Liquitex inks. And I do have a couple Amsterdams as well, I believe. I'm not sure what brand. Oh, goodness. I'm going to spit it. Make my life easier for me. <laughs> yeah, this one is Amsterdam. And this one is. And then I bought this one the other day. Right. Okay, and on the bottom, I have my Crafters Workshop paints. I have some gouache and um, Jane Davenport's paints and some watercolor paints. I have my Art Alchemy, Jelly Arts, and Dina Wakely. So that is what's in that tray, or cart, I should say. So this calendar I made using my silhouette. And I, <laughs> I had a field day. It was a pain in the butt, and I will never make another one. But I could not find a calendar that I liked. I wanted a dry erase calendar and I wanted it big enough that I could write in squares, but not so huge that it was taking up a huge chunk of the wall. So I ended up having to make one. And I did record me making it. I haven't watched the video to see how well it turned out because I was very frustrated. So I haven't watched it yet. If you're interested in seeing how I made it, let me know. Otherwise, I may not post it. So on these shelves, that's just a painting that I did. And one of those little sign thingies that you can change the letters to change the quote. Life is better when you're laughing. And this thing, I got this at the dollar store and I just loved it. And I had no idea what I was going to use it for. But I had to get it. Because I love that it's a tin and I love the color. And I keep my dry erase markers in there. So I'm so happy that I found a use for it. And it looks pretty sitting on my shelf. And I got to keep all this on the wall. That made me very happy. So that all remains. Haven't changed that. I did add some notes that when my room was downstairs and my kids would go in my room and I didn't know they were there. They would leave me little notes. My son wrote, love you. And then my daughter saw and wrote, I love you as well. <laughs> and then another I love you note. And then another sweet note. So, here we have one of those wax burning things. I actually got this one. These are usually quite expensive. And this one was on clearance at Michael's for $5.99. So it's not the absolute prettiest ones that you could get, but $5.99. I got it. And I'm using this thing. I got this at, oops, at Beauclair. And it's a magazine file thingy. And I'm using it to hold my gel plates. And then I have the small ones tucked behind. So I thought that's great because I can just flip through and pull out the gel plate I need. And they're standing up so there's no pressure on them. So I love that. Oh, no, I think these just have some dolls. Oh, no, it's pens. And that's the tin I made for the artist trading coins so this is the unit this doesn't come on it that's just a piece I have put there but this is the unit that came with those other two white drawers so the way it came so it came with this drawer and then the other two stacked on top which I thought was a pain in the butt 
because you tried to, like if you wanted to pull out the middle one, you pretty much had to pull them all out, take the top one off and then take the middle one. So that's why I ended up putting it in that other unit because it just made more sense to me. So here I am using it in this way. I have this tray that I got at the dollar store. Yes, I get most of my containers at the dollar store. Why not? So this just has magazine and printer, like things I printed off on the printer and just knickknacks of papers that I can use in collaging. So that can fit, that's why that's there. So I stop that from going back the whole way. And then I just sit this container, the tray, which actually did come with it on top. And this is how I store my collage items. So these are stuff that hasn't been cut and it's not, necess it's not from um, Mischief Circus. These might be just things I found on the computer or magazines and things like that. And these, I love these containers, these here. And again, I got these at the dollar store. And I love them. Let's see. Just one handed stuff. <laughs> so you just clip that open. And that's what they're like. And they come in different sizes. But they're great. So this one has the little squares pattern paper that that is from Mischief Circus as well. Everything in here is. And these are some words. And this one just has some knickknacks that have been cut that are out loose so I put in here. And this one is for arms and legs. I think this one has the bodies maybe. <laughs> so I sort them in that way and then I have these two containers which unfortunately will not fit in here now if I didn't have this tray on the bottom then I could just lay them on top like have this down here and lay those on top but I think these containers look nicer sitting there and take up less space than if I had this tray out of the drawer I tried so many different things with how to store my collage I was using this drawer, but then all the containers wouldn't fit, and then it got stuck and I couldn't open my drawer. So this is what I'm using for now until I can think of something better, if there is anything better. So in this one, I, sh I store the sheets that have not been cut yet or still have a lot on them. And I do have them separated just paper clip them for each set and then once they do get cut then they go into the containers so I have that and then this has borders so this one has this is a lot easier to open with one hand so they're great so that's all the borders this is not mischief circus but that's something I painted, and that's something I stamped, but all the rest is. Oh, this one has the bodies. The other one's just knick-knack things. And that's Jane Davenport paper pad. These are journals that I have made for my collaging. Let's see if I can get this put back. This is some cards that I made, I don't know how long ago. I was gonna throw it out, but then I thought, no, I won't, just in case I wanna send some off. These were sitting on my island because I just recently got them last week. Or was it this week? No, I think it was last week. From Scrappy Girl on Instagram. I just, I love them. I think she took note of what ones that I said I loved and then sent them to me. 
She's so sweet. Let me try to put this back. Okay, I wanted to get another one of these, but I have not been able to find one at the dollar store. And now I'm kind of wondering if I really need one, so. But I was gonna get another one. I think I was gonna use it to put this stuff in. So I may still pick one up if I do come across one. I like them and I got it at the dollar store. <laughs> but they're nice, they're not plastic, like this cork. It's so pretty. And this is some more knick-knack stuff that I use when collaging. Just some scraps of paper like that have been gel printed on and painted on. Bits and pieces, different things that I could use. It just all fits nicely in there. And that is another one of those, hold on, like has different compartments. So I'll probably forget that's there. So I have Tim Holtz, what's it called, collage paper. I was thinking they called it tissue, but no. So it's collage paper and then the big ones, the old ones, the deli paper and just some wax paper. So this may not look the neatest, but sometimes function has to win over looking pretty. And as long as it looks neat and tucked in, then I think it'll stay. This is just a big tray again that I got at the dollar store. And I think it's just nicer to have, like this is projects that I'm working on. And it's just nicer to have it in one tray. Like to me, it just looks less messy if it's contained in a tray. Maybe I'm being weird, I don't know. These, you wanna take a guess where they're from? <laughs> yes, the dollar store. This is a cover I made for this album, but it just didn't work. It didn't go with the inside, so I changed it. So there's some foil, deco foil stuff in there. And let's see, I was asked how I stored my stencils and this is how some are stored. Because I had so many crafters workshop stencils and they are 12 by 12, I store them in a different way than I do these. So this one is mostly like, I have Tim, Dina, and Diane in this one. I don't know why I keep them separate from the others. I just do. I just <laughs> They're a family. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. Tim's misbehaving. He's in the wrong spot. <laughs> and then there's some other stencils as well. Or maybe I did move Tim over here because his stencils aren't Ranger. But Ranger now said, like, they have the Stampers Anonymous, so I think he does need to go back over with Dina and Diane, which I'm pretty sure is how I was storing them anyway. And yes, I can be weird. All the great people are, you should know that. So those two are the smaller stencils and okay let's try this again the video cut off again because i deleted videos but i forgot to delete it from my deleted folder so i ran out of space again but anyways as i was saying i'm not sure where it left off but this is how or where i store my storage oh my goodness this is how i store my texture plates I don't have a ton, like I have enough, but it doesn't require a lot of space. So that's where they go. And this is great because it's right behind me and it's just easy to get. So now I will show the storage in these. And this is pretty much the same layout as it was in the basement, but almost all of them 
with the exception of maybe two are being used differently. So in this drawer is a just a mismatch of everything. There's some scraps of canvas that I don't want to throw out because and paper because it's really good paper and I can make strips and borders for collage and other things. It will get used. And some stamped images, pretty much all dilutions. There are some Tim Holtz in there as well. Some die cuts and some stamped images that haven't been colored. Just some hooks and poster strips. That has a whole bunch of punched hearts in it. And that has some paper beads in there that I made. These are some letters, some threads and fabric. And this is from doing the macrame and I didn't have the heart to throw it out because I felt like I could use it somehow. So it's just way too much. It just felt wrong to throw it out. So, and this is where I store my 12 by 12 stencils from the crafters workshop. So before I had the same storage, it was just, it was in a, a crate. For some reason this one does not want to go down. It was in a blue crate that is actually meant for putting file folders in, but I wanted it put away. I didn't want it out on the floor because it looked messy. So I wanted to be able to put it in a drawer. So I got this thing, which is a hanger for file folders. I got this at Staples for probably, I don't know, may have been $10. If it was more than that, it wasn't much more. And it was a bit too long. So I had Mark, my husband, cut the ends. Like these posts were pretty long. So I had him cut it off so it would fit in the drawer. So, and what I used to put the stencils in, <laughs> that's where the garbage truck is going by. Okay, so I put them in 12 by 12 scrapbooking page protectors. And what I will do is I have a black sheet of cardstock, 12 by 12 cardstock. I have one sheet in there. And on one side, I have one 12 by 12 stencil and the matching, like the same one in six by six. So it's the same, same stencil in both sizes in one pocket. And with the cardstock being in there, I can easily see it and it can be used as a divider. So I can have two more stencils on the other side. So I'm getting four stencils stored in one pocket. And on each one, I have them labeled because when I was a brand ambassador, it was quite handy to have all this information on the ready. And plus it's great for when I'm putting my stencils back, I know exactly where they go. So I have the designer and then I have the crafters workshop number of the stencil, the name of the stencil, and I even have when it came out. And then in here, I also have them divided by designer. So I have Art by Marlene, and I have Balzer Designs, and I have Rebecca Meyer, and it goes on. They're separated by designer. And that's how I store those. And back here, it's just some other big stencils and my extra refills the page protectors and I have some printer paper and just some binder pockets and stuff and some mailing envelopes because so I had a little extra space on the side oh and I also have these long stencils by crafters workshop they just happen to fit great right there on the side. So they're in there nicely and they won't get damaged. So I 
I love this. I won't be changing that. I was going to bring a filing cabinet in, but and I'm, that would work for you guys if you don't have like something like this. Then check to see. No, I didn't try it, so you have to check to see if it'll fit 12 by 12 for the height of the drawers. That was an option I thought of. This is my washi drawer and I kept it the same. I did throw out some washi tape. Didn't throw out tons, but I did throw some out. And I don't see this changing either because I like it too much. It's too pretty. <laughs> and this one, and it's a new cameo because when I was trying to make my calendar, my old cameo wouldn't work. Well, my silhouette. And when I think about it, I actually never, once I got my new computer, which was probably, oh goodness, maybe last year, or maybe it's been longer. I don't know, time flies. I have no concept of time. But what, ever since I got the new computer, my silhouette never did work. So I think my silhouette was so old that it just would not work with any new technology. Is the only thing I can think of. I contacted Silhouette, like their help desk, sent an email, but I never did hear back from them. I haven't thrown it out because I was waiting to hear from them to see if I could get it fixed. Because if I could, then... You know, who knows, maybe I'll end up making things with the silhouette and I could use two, who knows. But they never to get back to me, so I have no idea. Not the best customer service. <laughs> and under here, I have no idea why I'm keeping these. That's from the gel press plates. Maybe I'm keeping it for the names. Maybe that's why I kept it. But I have some silhouette stuff like the image transfer sheets and some vinyl and heat transfer. I have my Instax camera, or printer, I should say. More silhouette stuff. It's pretty much everything for the silhouette and then that's a light box. So that drawer didn't really change. This one, I did more filing. And it's the same system. And this is how I'm storing my gel prints. And then this is just a mess. <laughs> but I decided to store them so it's not so hard to go through all of them. So I have like light paper images, thin papers, light papers, heavy papers, and then like heavy papers with light colors, heavy papers and dark colors, and then smaller gel prints, and special paper, like there's Yupo and canvas. And I have marbled papers, and newspaper, wax paper, tissue paper. Just have it sorted that way. And in this drawer, I have these stamps, with, like the date stamps, and they have little sayings. I kept this punch over here because I thought these are more along the lines of some punches that I would use more often. And they were too big to go in my island drawer, like too big this way. And that's a corner decorative punch. And for those little, you know, reinforcements. I think that's what they're called. I just have some napkins for collaging. It's just some odd things. This paper crimper. And there's some Dina collage paper. And my Art by Marlene papers and die cuts. And this one is a little hard to open because 
the outlet is right there. So I have to like, see how it only wants to go that far. So it scrapes. But I moved my stamps from the island into these two drawers. So this is pretty much all of my stamps except for um, Ranger and Stampers Anonymous and Carabelle. All other brands are in this drawer. And I do have it organized a little by alphas, words, people. So I did organize it a little, but I haven't gone back to organize it further since I moved upstairs. I didn't get around to it and I kind of forgot as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, see this catches, it's from the drawer side, and this one has, like I said, has all my Dilution stamps, my Dina Wakely stamps, and my Tim Holtz, they're all falling. Oh, and my Art by Marlene is in here. Oh, these are down in front here. Usually they go back here, but I was using them for a project. And I put them back in the wrong place. And these aren't usually in here, but I'm using them for a project. Oh, my cat got in here. <laughs> Proof that my cat got in here. I have my Carabell stamps in the front because they're quite large. And that's a huge acrylic block. That's my long dilution stamps. More small Carabell, Tim Holtz, more dilutions, another Tim. And then my Art by Marlene. And cat fur. Okay, my island. I feel bad that I have this all over it, but you know, it gets used. And you can so tell that I work on this side and not that side. So like I said in the first video of the room tour in the basement, this is the island that my husband Mark made for me. So we kind of figured out well, he told me first, like, figure out what you want to use it for. Have a general idea of what you would like to store in there, but not do it in such a way that you can never change it. So I knew, like, I knew from having these that I loved having these smaller drawers. Like, they're big this way, but they're not deep. I love these. So I knew I wanted some in this island. So these top two are the smallest drawers. And they're just deep enough that I can fit these smaller items. So in this one I have my circle punches. Because like I've said before, I suck at circles. Corner punch, and this just has this cool shape. I have a math set and I have the Dilusions ink pad and some bigger Ranger, Ranger archival ink pads and some other ones. I just have, in the big ones I have red, black, is it sienna? Oh, sepia. I have a couple of acrylic blocks and I have the Dilusion journal blocks. I have a sheet of plastic for doing the smush te technique that I like to do. I have a notepad for when I want to jot things down, like if I'm doing a video and I'm going to want to tell you guys how big something is or certain colors or anything like that. I have my scissors and a knife and whatever this thing's called. I call it the poker tool. <laughs> Pencil sharpener. Something else for doing circles. If it does circles, I probably have it. Tiny attacher, 
some sponges. A dropper that I couldn't find when I spilled all my walnut ink because it was somewhere else. So once I did find it, I put it in this drawer. But it came in handy to try to suck up some of that walnut ink that I spilled. This is just a scraper tool and some erasers. And then this one I keep mostly adhesive. So there's like foil tape, there's packing tape, a masking tape. Even drywall tape because, you know, it's cool texture. <laughs> Some foam dots and little tape runners. This is the tape that I use for my journals for binding that is sports tape. And I don't know if I'll end up regretting using it or not, but so far it's working out for me and not causing any problems. I bought it in a clear as well, but I don't think I'm going to use this one because it's not fabric. It's, I can't imagine it taking tape, um, paint. As you can see, it's kind of more plasticky. So I won't be using that one for journals. I just have some glue sticks and wet glue. My double-sided sticky tape. Ranger Wonder Tape E6000. I guess I should move the camera. <laughs> the diamond glaze. It's just all adhesive, pretty much. So, this is Tim Holtz, pretty much. The re inkers are along the back. I don't have all the re inkers for all my ink pads. Um, these are for distress inks, these are the oxide inkers and again like I said I don't have them all I don't have all of the distress inks either um, or do I hmm no I don't I can tell by looking at them I have baby wipes and in this thing there's alcohol ink I showed you that in one of the other videos of mini little archival ink pads and I want to get one of those holders for it which I'll show you because I have one in another drawer I want to get another one for those these are swatches of the distress ink and I have the foams for the applicators and I have enamel accents that I don't use. I bought them for a reason and I can't remember the reason. I would like to remember because I would like to use it for whatever I was gonna use it for. <laughs> I need to learn to write things down. I'm gonna skip this one and go to this one because this one is more Tim Holtz. So this is like I said, my Tim Holtz drawer. It has my Distress Oxide ink sprays. And I don't think I will change this. I think, like I'm thinking for the ink pads, I may want Mark to make me two more of these and then have my Distress Oxide ink pads and then my regular Distress ink pads. So, I'll do that with the ink pads, but I don't think I want my sprays out like I do my pads. I'm liking this way, especially like go on the Ranger website. If I remember, I'll leave a link to where on the Ranger website that you can go to print off these labels, but it's so handy. Like they have these not going to focus. There we go. It tells you the color and it shows the color. So it's nice having it in the drawer because I can see it from the top what colors there are. So these are all my oxide ink sprays and I'm getting them as they come out now because I don't want to have to buy a whole bunch at one shot. 
in here some refresher, some resist spray, and one time I ordered from Summons the Stamps, and if you spent so much on Tim products, you got one of these free. So I have a little one as well. These are, I don't have a lot of them, but they're the Distress Spray Stain. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking I might want all of these, like in all his colors. And if not all, then pretty darn close. I have these, and I don't think I will buy any more of these. So I don't use these very much. I like the sprays better. So I think this is it. I, unless I find a, a technique that I like using these, then I don't think I will buy any more of these. And these are the Distress Paints. And I haven't used these a whole lot, so I don't have much to say about those yet. And these are the labels that I haven't used because I don't have the colors yet. There's a whole bunch of labels in there. And this is the thing I was talking about I want to get for the other ink pads. It's made to fit the mini archival inks. And these are, this tin is the Tim Holtz colors that he came out with. So like these colors are actually the same colors as his ink pads. So like you have Vintage Photo, Grand Espresso, Black Soot, Barn Door, same color line which is great. I have Distress Collage Medium and I have some Ranger Texture Paste and Distress Glaze. It's just some archival ink cleaner stuff for alcohol inks, the blending solution. And then I do the swatches of the colors. So I'll go back up and staying with Ranger. This is my Diane drawer. I did this one, I don't know how long ago. It's been years and I love this drawer. It's just so nice and organized. So in each, like I have dividers in this drawer, so it fits two colors. So, like for example, I have fresh lime and mushy peas. So I have the two paint jars. Then I have the blending foam applicator for each color. So this one is mushy peas, this one is fresh lime. Then I have the ink sprays, mushy peas, fresh lime. And then I also have the Koi watercolor brush filled with, I just, put some of the ink spray into one of these so then I can color images with them. And so everything for those two colors will be in the square. And then each, like I said, each one has two colors and everything I need in the same color is in that square, well, rectangle. And then I have on the side, I have the shimmer sprays so they can lay flat which if I get any more, I don't think I will buy any more, but if I get sent any, then I may need to find a new way to store them because I don't have much room to lay them down. What a problem to have, right? <laughs> but isn't that pretty? The light is glaring on some of them, but I love that. I love when you can organize things nice like this. And it's hard to organize everything, but some things just work. But this one, it's a lot of jars. Like a lot of this stuff I got, you have to remember, I was Crafters Workshop brand ambassador. So they sent me, I mean, they are so, so nice, so generous when you're on their teams. Like, this is all <laughs> Crafters Workshop. There's different colors of gesso and modeling paste, 
There's different types of gel medium. And I love, I use their gel medium tons. And this paste, love it. And I tend to use this, not the gloss, but this one is empty. <laughs> Hopefully that's a full one. Yes, it is. That's how much I love it. So this one hasn't been opened yet, and this one's ready for the trash. I just didn't throw it out because I wasn't sure if I had another one to show you guys. Yeah. I have some beeswax, some mini art stones, mud pudge. Make sure I'll say that right. I think I pissed somebody off in one of my collage videos. Because I kept saying mud pudge. <laughs> And somebody corrected me in the comments. <laughs> it was funny. Sorry. <laughs> and I have some petroleum jelly, which I know it seems weird, but it was for gel printing. And again, um, what's it called? Sanitizer. Baby powder. <laughs> Baby oil. It's all for gel printing. Coffee. <laughs> And there's some inks, some crackle medium. Oh, there we go. And this one I think is almost like a junk drawer. It's just, didn't have a home for it, but wanted it in the room. I, I bought some of this, so many people suggested it, and I haven't tried it yet, but I've been told to use this to clean my paint brushes. And people have also said they use it on their um, gel plates so I have not used it yet it has not been open but I bought some to try next time and I have some brushes that need to be clean some more baby wipes some a marbling kit pencils paper towel glue sticks and glue guns extension cords heat gun and this one there's some Copic markers, my Distress Crayons, and these containers are great. Hold on. I may have shown this in the other video, but just in case, there's these little latches. So you undo those, and it comes into the compartments. And I have very few pan pastels down there. I have some chocolate pastels, some oil pastels, and this is another container. I just don't have it latched. These are woodies, which everybody seems to love, and I need to try and remember to use mine. I may have to put them in a jar and put them on my island, and then I might remember to use them. Some Pit Artist Pen Big Brush, and I have some in the smaller ones as well. Prismacolor pencils, ink tense pencils, just some Crayola washable markers, stuff for just doing the techniques. And this one is my 8.5 by 11 cardstock. And then I have some cutoff pieces in there, my Ranger craft mats, some bags, some cleaning cloths. That's it for this side of the oven. This may be a silly thing to show you, but I love my new trash can. <laughs> I got it at Winners. I love the color. Oh, how well it's showing up on camera, but such a pretty color. And it's great because if my hands are dirty, I can just step on it and they'll open. This is another table Mark made for me for my sewing machine. I had thought my sewing machine would go over there, but it works here, because it fits along. They're great. And I can just wheel my chair over. So it works there. It hasn't bothered me at all. So this side, this hasn't changed. It's all my embossing powder and glitter. 
pads. This is like where I put all my pens and markers and stuff. It's just all different colored pens. This is, hmm. This is the thing Mark made for me for doing paper beads. That is little sections for a wood burning thing, this thing. And this is like punch thing. <laughs> you know, like it has letters or different shapes. Then you hammer it onto like wood or metal. And then this is the same thing. It's an alphabet set. These are just little things for doing jewelry bits. Same. This is odd big things like spray paint, silicone putty, some big things of gesso. God, I had this. It's for acrylic pouring. Has my label maker. My old eyelet setter, which now I tend to go to more than my crocodile. This is a circle cutter. This one is great. It's a making memories. And that's the recycling truck. This is another circle cutter. I think that's another one as well. My friend gave me that one. I did not buy that. That's a label, the old fashioned label maker. And a big, for the big staples that they came out with. Again, scrapbooking days. are my eyelets and brads. Melting pot. Another eyelet setter. This is red pom-poms. Ribbons. Ribbons and buttons. This one is, my husband's been going in here a lot. So it's a bit messy. Some cups for epoxy. Some molds. And some clay. And on the top of the island, it's an old cup that I put the paintbrushes in that I'm using. It needs to be filled with some water because it's almost empty. So those are probably a bunch of brushes that need to be clean. I use this, I'm always grabbing this, so instead of putting it away, it just sits there because I'm constantly grabbing it. And believe it or not, being upstairs with a big window, even during the daytime, if I'm filming, which this is where I have my camera, if I am filming a video, I have this huge light on, and I have that light on behind me. For filming, I still need to turn on this one and this one to get decent light for filming. So what I'm thinking, and my husband suggested it and I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't even want to bring this one in first because I kept thinking, oh my goodness, it's going to be so ugly. But it works. So I'm thinking I may have to listen to him and get one of these to go back here. Yeah. So he may be right. 
And yeah, I have it on film. So this is my Ot Light. And this one's great. My husband got me this one for, I think it was last Christmas. It was either last Christmas or the one before. And it has the time and the temperature and the date. And on the back, where did it go? Oh, right here, <laughs> I'm using it. On the back, it has a spot where I can plug in phone charger. And that's just some settings to change things. And it has different types of light too. So there's the on and off. And then you can have like your yellow light or your white light. There's three different ones. I usually choose the white. And then you can go bright or dark. So I have my art guard, which I usually forget to put on my hands. Just some knickknacks of things. I have the Tim Holtz word stickers that I like to use for my journals and stuff. These old school things. <laughs> and some Dilusions coloring sheets, pages that I torn out of a Dilusion journal. And those bands. have a cup with just some pins and knickknacks and then the rest of my brushes and spatulas and palette knives and stuff like that and a splat box that uh, <laughs> that scrappy girl sent me with my art cards that she sent me as well <laughs> thank you Courtney <laughs> And I use this old slice uh, mat for doing art on because you can wipe it off and if you cut on top of it that's fine too, although I try not to. Here's you get the self-healing mats for the cutting. And this journal is out because I want to get it finished. And it's almost finished. There's just a few pages that need to be done. And then I can do a flip through of a journal. A finished journal. I have never done that before. So, I think that's it. I think that's my entire room. Can't think of anything that I forgot to go over. If you have any questions or if there's something you wish I went into more detail about. Oh, wait, I have to show you my other door. I'll have to go around because, like I said, I have a clamp on it because my cat went in. But I'll go on the other side so you can see what it looks like from the other side. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get this because they're so big. <laughs> But that's the track system. That's the door. I'll take the clamp off so I can show you. So the way it's done, this panel can move, but we did it so it's fixed. And then it opens that way. So when it is open, There's one panel on each side of the door. Oh, it's closing. <laughs> yeah, isn't that nice? I am in love. It is awesome. It's definitely my happy place. But I call my basement spot the happy place too. Where I make art, that's where I'm happy. So I do hope you enjoyed that room tour. If there's anything that you would like a more detailed look at, or if you have any questions about how I'm doing something that maybe I just didn't explain in the video, or where I got something, how to do something, 
leave a question down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can and hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions. Um, I will do another video when things change, like, I mean, that could, it, it'll definitely be next year sometime because like I said, my husband has a lot of projects on the go as well. Plus he works full time, so he is quite busy and has a lot to do. So it'll be next year sometime before he gets around to making a desk or tops for the other desk or anything like that. So when new things happen, I will do a video and show you. And I may have some little clips of projects that were done for this room. I can't think of what <laughs> they were now, but I feel like there's three different things. I know one was the calendar. Like I said, if you are interested in seeing how that was made, let me know. I'll have a look at the video <laughs> and see if it's good enough to share. I'm not a silhouette professional, so it may not be the best quality. Like I said, I haven't looked at it yet, so I don't really know. Um, oh, the sun is bright. And I can see it now that I'm upstairs. <laughs> um, the other thing, it was the pots, just very simple. I'll just probably insert that into this video. I feel like there was a third thing. I don't know. It's on my computer if there is another thing. But yeah, if there's anything you would like to know or see, just let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you don't subscribe, please do so. I noticed that a lot of the viewers are not actually subscribed. Like it tells you in analytics if um, like how many people watch your video that are actually subscribed and there's actually quite a larger number of those who are not subscribed. So if you like my video and you wanna stay updated on what I post, please hit the subscribe button down below. It helps me a lot and it's nice to know that people are enjoying what I'm putting out there and when you leave comments, that's great feedback. And I love knowing what you guys want to see. And I know I can't always make you happy or make everybody happy because some people are going to want to see gel printing videos, some are going to want collage, some want a mix of everything, which is really good because I do a mix of everything. But I always welcome feedback. I love hearing from you guys. I love reading your comments. A lot of you make me laugh and I really enjoy it. I want to thank you all so much. So, have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye.